Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Alignment Channel. Now this video is all about what we've got in store and in fact I've just finished doing an audit of what we've got in store um, and so I thought I'd film that. Um, it's worth pointing out though that we're not big storers really um, so we much prefer to eat everything that we can possibly eat fresh. Uh, we don't have a lot of freezer space and what we do have is kind of dedicated initially uh, in a sort of autumn to storing all of the fruits uh, because obviously we can't eat those fresh uh, over winter and into spring um, and then as we sort of work our way through the uh, fruits what we'll start to do is we'll start to process onions and squash and things like that and put those in the freezer and that's the way that we make those last uh, until the uh, uh, the uh, new season products are available um, you know we, we generally find that we can't keep as many onions as we want as much garlic as we want uh, all the way through sort of to May and June and have it in good quality but obviously we can just chop that garlic up and freeze it we can chop those onions up and freeze them and at, at that time really in sort of May and June that's when the freezer is pretty much empty so we're really just taking our stored produce and freezing it and then getting fresh produce and then storing it and then freezing it so it's that sort of cycle um, most of the stuff we store at home just in a shed that's unheated it's quite damp it's not ideal um, it does get a little bit too warm in late April and May and so by that time we really need to be having fresh stuff to replace it and to put a bit of work in to make sure we've always got carrots and beetroot and onions uh, and early summer squashes available fresh sometime in May just as we're starting to run out of the stuff that's in store. Um, so the rest there is a little bit that we store in the ground so we still generally store our carrots in the ground um, and we've got some squash that we store on the allotment in Jenny's shed um, but other than that everything's at home so let's have a quick look round so let's start by looking at the preserves now we're very lucky at our house to have this amazing full height cupboard in the kitchen um, this is where we keep our preserves and we've given a lot away over the last couple of months and especially at Christmas but we've still got a reasonable selection left so I've got a nice selection of pickles all sorts of stuff in here peppers gherkins onions garlic nasturtium capers all sorts of stuff and then over here we've got mainly passata mixes and a pretty nice selection there a little bit of a few apple sauces and then we've got all the jams a nice big selection of jams more apple sauces jams and jellies we've got some more passata mixes and gherkins and then we keep a whole load of garlic in that same cupboard and lots more garlic outside and this year we actually created a little database that we use to keep track of all these different preserves um, how many we've made who likes them what the ingredients are what the recipes are how much they cost how much they're worth and all that sort of thing and uh, so while I'm talking now I'll just put up some uh, little pictures of that database but most of the preserves we actually keep in the shed in the back garden and so we've got a variety of different things here that I'll show you in a second and then we've also got we have two fridges and two freezers uh, we have an allotment fridge an allotment freezer and then we just have a general fridge and a general freezer as well there's nothing much in the allotment fridge at the moment just one salad left because I'm harvesting today but normally this is full of uh, allotment produce and then we have the what's mostly the allotment fridge freezer rather with all allotment frozen food all sorts of berries and um, 
drinks and all sorts of stuff in here we process a lot of onions and we've got lots of little compots and things like that um, and then there's loads of beans more onions etc etc and we gradually kind of fill this up from the uh, stored produce as the year progresses we used to keep our potatoes in sacks but we found it was a real pain because you were constantly having to empty the sacks out uh, in order to check that everything was still in good condition and it was hard to find the right size potatoes and the right varieties because they were all mixed into the sacks and obviously the sacks took a lot of space in the, on the floor so what we do now is we keep them in these tray in these wooden boxes with this thick uh, fleece over the top and that's doubled and up. That just makes it really easy to see what we've got and what you can see is we have not got a lot of potatoes left this year. It's been a real disaster really potato wise. Loads and loads of really small potatoes. We've just got a lot of blight this year and uh, yeah potatoes didn't do very well. We've got five tubs of potatoes uh, still outside um, which haven't been harvested yet. And then we've got the schlots, we basically keep those the same. We need to keep an eye on them though. <coughs> We're always checking them out because little bits of mould. So um, we still use those, we just take them in um, and, uh, and use the ones that are going mouldy as quickly as possible. Um, but reasonable selection there of shallots. And then we've got another box down here. Of potatoes that uh, Debbie forgot about. I think she uh, she said she'd finished with all the baking potatoes, but yeah, we've got another one there, and that's just stored under this, underneath the sacks, basically, like that. And then we've got the beetroot. I'm a massive fan of beetroot. Have it most days. We've got the golden beetroots here. We've got the red beetroots here. The red ones are cylindra. Um, the golden ones are burpees golden um, and we store them in these damp slightly damp wood chips basically buried in there and they'll keep until we have fresh beetroot we've got them in the ground at the moment growing away nicely and we've got five boxes of beetroot they're all full uh, we really like apples, um, but obviously it's hard to get apples to keep much beyond now. So we've got a lot of apples dehydrated and we keep them in these bags sealed up so that we don't get any light. Uh, we've got another bag of pears, just the same. Really do recommend dehydrating your fruit. And that's our little dehydrator. Needs a bit of a wipe down, a little bit of mould growing on it there. And then we've got loads of uh, Crown Prince squash. Uh, most of those are down on the allotment in Jenny's shed. We're gradually working our way through. These won't last us until uh, we have new squash. Uh, so we'll run out probably in a few months time. But also we find that you do, we do start to lose um, the quality, eating quality on them. So probably in a month or two, the ones that we've got left will start um, freezing. And so as we get more space in that allotment freezer, we'll start processing onions and squash uh, into the freezer. And that means we never run out basically. So the last of the fresh apples. And we have this little wire rack storage area and we've got garlic and elephant garlic in here and then we've got more shallots in there and then these are our red onions we're doing quite nicely we um we basically grow small onions so this is the sort of size that we go for uh, we find they keep better we've got a little dusting maybe of 
mold on the surface of some of these but uh, they're pretty good this is a really nice size um, bigger onions than this we you know we don't need <laughs> a bigger onion than that each day so it's nice to have those smaller ones we multi sell all our onions but we do have these big ones if we need them and actually quite nice these are Elsa Craig I think um, not too bad not too many left of those but we will have onions until um, in store until we've got fresh ones because we do grow them over winter under cover uh, so we'll be harvesting onions in May we've got just enough there with, with the shallots as well to get us through to May and then outside we've got one bed of carrots still still in pretty good condition although the shape of them is not particularly great a bit hard to get them out of the soil at the moment because I think it froze a bit last night but uh, yeah they're pretty good and then we've got these few little beetroot outside and basically we haven't actually started eating any of the beetroot that are in store um, we've probably got another two or three weeks worth of beetroot here and say they're only little little baby ones but uh, still worth having and so yeah by the end of January we'll be switching over to the stored beetroot and then we'll be eating those through until May and then as I said we'll switch over to our newly harvested ones and we've also got these two big boxes full of uh, black carrots and if we get any really cold weather we'll probably lift those and take those inside so they are kind of carrots of last resort although we do we are still picking a few because it's nice to have some black carrots as well as orange ones and then last but not least we've got potatoes here and so we've got one two three and then these two four or five five tubs of potatoes waiting for harvest and we've got I think six at the allotment as well uh, so these are actually new potatoes notionally Christmas potatoes so I hope you like this quick video and as always I love a bit of feedback on what you're storing how much you're storing when you're going to run out whether you're going to have fresh stuff to replace it or I'm going to have to resort to the shops are you storing anything that I'm not storing uh, so for sure for example we're not storing any celeriac at the moment we've just got a little bit in the fridge um, and you know uh, I'm sure there's lots of things that, that we don't have in our store that you have in yours so I'm always looking to learn and uh, so any feedback that you've got any hints and tips always gratefully received I'll see you soon